In this video, we'll be having a look at global colours on the iPad. Global colours for designer, that is, Affinity Designer on the iPad. Now, you can use um, photo or pixel shapes, but it's far easier to get your head around it if you're using vector images, because you'll have separate curves. So let's look at it. Let's open your vector image. Hmm. Now this can be a problem. At the moment, none of the Affinity programs create their own vector images. And on the iPad, this can be a bit of a problem. But I found a solution to this. So, open your vector image. That is an image made of curves, not pixel images. Now I use a great little app on my iPad called VectorQ to vectorize PNG images. It does others, but I find PNG easier to work with. Now, I'm not related to these people in any way. It's just a brilliant little program that works really well on the iPad. So let's get right into it. Load a suitable PNG and vectorize it and then save it. It's that easy. Just load your image in. Select pure vector from the whole list of um, types there. And for this exercise, we're just using pure vector. And you can change the number of shapes, the colors. It's quite a complex little program. But we're not here to talk about that. We're going to make it a very simple leaf. Oh, leafy. Ah, oh, very good. Lovely spelling. It's almost clip art. I've reduced the tuning to 40, the steps, the level 30, threshold 30. Hmm, there's probably still too many breakdowns there, but it doesn't matter for this exercise. Now, save it as an SVG file. And it's a pure vector SVG file. We can now set about... <coughs> excuse me. We can now set about changing the colours as we need. And I just called it simply leaf clip art. I'm going to change the leaf colours from spring to autumn. And you can see there's been lots of little um, progress down there as I made the raindrop leaf. You may have seen that in one of my previous videos. So let's load our newly converted image. First, the original. There's the original. Now select the vectorized image. And you can see it's quite different. As I said, I, I made that on purpose so it's almost clip art. And you can see all the curves down the right hand side, they're all on separate layers. And they're all varying shades of green, which makes it a little difficult. But we'll come to that later, because you would, if you wanted to have full control of those greens, have them all as global colours. But we're not going to quite do that for this exercise. The second part of the exercise, yes. So, go to the Color Studio, the Swatches section, and create a palette and name it. I called it Leaf Palette. Now, oddly enough, we may or may not be coming back to that, because set a, select the color on the leaf, and using the sandwich, add Current Fill to Palette. And you can see it on the, it's at the top of the list. So the green that's selected at the moment, add that Current Fill to the palette. And there it is. In Leaf Palette, you've got a green. Standard fill added to palette. Now let's have a look at the next step. Let's add a global color. Using the sandwich, select Add Global Color. Now, in Affinity Designer for iPad at the moment, I'm almost certain, this is 1.9.1 version, that global colors and colors are not fully implemented just yet. So a lot of this is a workaround. But never mind, it works really well. Except that if you don't already have a palette of global colors, Affinity will add a palette called, guess what, global colors. And there we go. Global color one. You're presented with the color slider when you click add global colors. Now we don't really want to set this color by hand. Well, not at the moment. You can if you're really getting into your design. So we copy the original using Edit. So now just press Add Global Color down the bottom of the, of the um, color slide, as you can see. 
A global colour of white will be added. It has the little tag in the lower right corner. It also puts it into a new palette called Global Colours. Oh, I've grown, so our leaf palette is now somewhere else and we're using Global Colours. So you can also add the fill again if you like. Remember before um, on, the, on the menu it had Add Current Fill as a colour in the palette. And that's what the green one there is. I just added it again. Just to remind me it's there. If Affinity wants to call this palette Global Colours, fine by me. Test it out with the single green curve still selected. That's the one on the left hand side you can see, the arrow pointing to it. Select the white Global Colour. It will change the area to white. And you can tap the green fill to fill it back if you like. And how does that work? It's because it's the only one selected. It's not really showing you the true value of global colours. Now we're showing the colours in list mode as opposed to the little circle dots if you like that it was before. To edit the white global colour you long hold on the colour to bring up the sub menu and we want to edit that colour. The colour slider comes up and you can now select the eyedropper. This is a quick way of colouring it. Unless you know the exact colour numbers as per the original fill colour because if you list that it will show you the colours of the fill. But we can do it a quicker way by selecting the eyedropper and dragging it over the green selection and release it. The white global colour changes to green because you need it for later. And we'll see this in the second part of the video how truly tricky this is. But for a quick example now, by now editing the global colour, you can change any instance of that colour. In this case, only the one, because it's selected. If I didn't have that one selected, other colours on there might change if they were the same green. For instance, if, the, if you couldn't see the blue dots and the blue rectangle, the whole image was selected, other colours may invariably change because there will be something in there that was the same colour as the global colour and I would have set that. All your colours have to be global colours if you want to change them to the same thing. And you can see in there there's lots of other greens but only that one changed. You can change all similar colours by applying a global colour. Now you can see I've got a lot more global colours in there. Global 1, Global 4 and Global 6. And they're in order 1, 4 and 6 because the greens take up the other colour, the other colour numbers if you like. Is this confusing? I'll make it all a lot simpler very soon. The global colours are all applied there, so have fun with that. Remember if you want to change all of the greens to all, to all oranges, you can do it um, you can do it slowly as I've done there because as you can see there's only a few colours, or you can make them all global colours and change them at the same time which is what we're going to do shortly. Because this takes a little bit of getting your head around. How do we make global colours global? Well that's what I want to show you now. Let me show you in this next section showing global colour manipulation in detail. Now thanks for watching this bit. We'll begin the next bit following this. In this little exercise let's have a look at how we enable and create global colours. That is a colour that you can use to change a multitude of objects that will have the same base colour to start with. So let's look at our group of aeroplanes here. We've got a, a group of biplanes. Now what I need to do first to change one or all of these individually is to create some global colours. We do this by going to there, 
Then to the sandwich at the top, you can see that and add global color. Now there's two ways we can do this. You can see we've got color one there. We can global color one. Now we don't have a global color palette for this document yet. And because of that, it will automatically create one called global color. So let's do that. And there you can see we have global colors and the first global color. Now obviously it's white, but we're gonna make that black. So we go from there to edit. Now black is zero, zero, zero in the RGB space. So we'll go zero, drag the sliders all the way down there, zero, zero, zero. And you can see it's black. Now there we go. Now we want to change the colors of these aeroplanes. So let's select the global color black. You can see it there. The, the dot has changed up the top to black. Not white, but black. Global color black. Now we can tell it's a global color because it's got that little bottom facing triangle there. Let's have a look at it in the circle. See this black circle with the little bottom facing triangle. But we want to, we want the, I want the list. So, using the global color, we'll select, oops, too many taps, very sensitive. Just tap on that, makes it all black. Tap on that, makes it all black. Oh, I see what I've done. I've still got, I've got nodes selected. We want move tools selected. Select on the entire object, global color black. Select on the entire object, global color black. 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 Now we know this by going to the layers and you can see they're all black in there, which of course is what they were before. So this is not an amazing thing to see. But what happens if I go up there, there are, there's none selected, then the global color is black. Long hold on there on global colors. So edit comes up. Now I can change this to a blue. And you can see all of the aeroplanes because it's a global color in there. All of the aeroplanes are going to a bluey color. Put a bit of that in there, put a bit of that in there. All the aeroplanes are now red. So that's our global color. Now, what I want to do though, is have some other objects and we'll go down here to the object and create an ellipse. Now the ellipse is white, and that's not a global color. I selected that one there. Duplicate. Oops. Getting ahead of myself there, drag that one over there. Now we've got two objects, and we can add their color Go up here to the sandwich again. Add current fill to the palette. And you can see we've got just a white. It hasn't got the triangle there, so it's not a global color. We've just got the white. That one's white. That one's white. Now, if you want to change those colors, you'll have to change them individually. Let's unselect them and create another global color. This global color, I want to start with blue. I'll we'll make it a bit lighter. There we go. And you can see it's called global color two. Now, there we go. That's the one that's selected. And we can go over to there and make it 
it's a global color now but it's global color too go to that one tap on that color and it's a global color number two they're both the same colors you see there they are the two little triangles and one without there are your two global colors one and two let's go to there hold down edit I want to put a bit of green in there make the circles green that's fine but I don't want the aeroplanes to be red anymore go to there and edit those ones I want those aeroplanes to change to a complementary green shall we say and there it is all the aeroplanes have changed to green so you can add global colors you can change individual items as global colors and you can also have CMYK 000 and you can make something a single color select that one and there it goes is it still a global color no it's not so we can select that one but it's back because it's selected and it's back as a global color there we go hold it down edit and change it to there okay okay and there we go now that's all that's well let's let's not say that's all there is to global colors I suggest you take a long time playing with global colors because that's exactly what they do you can change lots of things throughout a document using global colors okay that's all for now thank you very much